Bing, bong, bing! Caleb Wright, King of Dragons and Tigers, author of The Odyssey of the Dragolitha. Welcome to the Uniweb interview show, my friend. Thank you, and thank you for having me, Matt. I'm so happy you uh, came on and, and you're joining me today. We were talking before I started uh, this live interview <laughs> that your book covers are fantastic. Now, I haven't had a chance to read any of it, um, which I, I plan to. Will you please tell me what this this book series is about? So, um, when I when I started writing, uh, it was about back in November. Well, sorry, October, but I got like officially writing in November. Um, of last year? Yeah, last year. Wait, so these books, you've done five books since November of last year? Am I? Thousand words a day. So you're a maniac like I am. That's awesome. I am a robot. I am a total robot. Every day that I can. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, when I started writing, it was originally just to improve my writing skills for my day job, which I just do IT. And uh, after the first paragraph, I'm like, yeah, I got to finish this story. So, <laughs> like, it just... You got really it, excited by it? Oh, it, it took off because um, I couldn't think how to start the book. And I saw some advice online from a seasoned traditional author who said, define your villain, and that will define your heroes. And I'm like, oh, I love that so much. So I did that, and I kept it a secret who it was, so that way it was like this giant foreshadowing. So like the beginning paragraph, um, it starts at a five-year uh, kind of foreshadow, so it leaps forward yeah. five years, and yeah. it talks about two specific characters, and then after that paragraph, it goes into the actual story itself. So I'm pretty much... More or less teasing the audience, saying, like, things are going to get crazy, but you got to go along for the ride before we get to that point. So, um, but the story, it, uh, it's three, three female main characters and two male main characters. Um, I couldn't find a way to do it in first person that made sense, so I took it in a omnipresent uh, third person yeah. point of view, and it just seemed to fit better. Um so it's hard to jump first person without like naming the chapter the person's name and then right and i didn't really want to lose the scenes because what i did is i took a lot of the time um after the first book it actually started splitting to where groups of people were going here people were over here people traveling in space and i'm like i gotta talk about everyone everything that's happening I can't just leave it all to nothing. So people are traveling in space real quick. Is this when is this set? Because most dragon type uh, fantasy is is like medieval. medieval. Is this yep. is this future? This is sci fi futuristic kind of like I took this on a whole different path of what the normal this, term of a dragon. So this is like snakes on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> More but involved than that, yeah. Dragons on <laughs> dragons on a spaceship. <laughs> yes and no. So dragons on a spaceship, but they're half dragons. So okay. in the first story, they turn into half dragons. And then in the first book, they really just do not have control of their powers. Um, it's bestowed upon them, so it's not, it's not an inherent ability. They become okay. half dragons as mortals to start. Um, okay. And so when they first go to space... You know, they that's not really till book two, but they do have to be in a ship. Uh, towards the end of book two, though, their power grows and they're actually able to be in space on their own. And then I've designed special spacesuits that can actually convert the elements of space to give oxygen for their fire powers and ice powers. So, dude, that sounds freaking dope, man. Did you did you do any? <laughs> That sounds really cool. Did you do research? I was doing a lot of research. I was yeah. trying to keep it in the realm of like relatively possible, but still kind of like, damn. <laughs> yeah. So because sci when you write science fiction, there's a huge population of science fiction readers who, if it if it's not somewhat scientifically possible right now or like in the future, then they're like, Pfft. yep, yeah, exactly. One of um one of my beta readers actually loved uh, one of my characters from book two because. The way I explained his spaceship was that it changed its shape according to his biometric DNA. 
So it wasn't something that could be piloted by other people because it was literally coded to his body. And it changed shape according to what he looked like. Wow. So he was like, that's so cool. (laughs) (laughs) It is really cool, man. So, yeah. the But the idea with the series is that um, I was researching tropes and I really love D&D and uh, magic and just like yeah. a lot of role play stuff and old games like Final Fantasy Zelda. Um, it was really heavily inspired from the game Legend of the Dragoon, which is a PlayStation 1 game. Sadly, yeah. that doesn't have a remake anymore because of the company going bankrupt. So like the only way I can live on was in my thoughts. So I'm like, you know, let's put it on paper. Um, and nice. Then, oh, so what happened was I was like, okay, I want to make a character that's, like, kind of cunning and deceptive. I want one that's strong. I want one that's, uh, you know, funny and quirky. I want one that's decisive and judgmental. So I tried to build all of that into five different characters. So, yeah. And you then, have that uh, well-rounded team. Yeah, exactly. It, it couldn't just be one person because someone asked, like, who's the leader? And I'm like, they all are. Like, I, I can't, I can't yeah. split it to one specific person. Granted, the story does go in the direction of one character by the end, but for very specific reasons. <laughs> so By the end of book three or? By the end of book five. Um, by the end of... You, you can see the direction it starts going by the end of book two, but um, just the amount of stuff that they have to go through, it's just like, give them a break. <laughs> so, <laughs> I felt so, the same um, way about writing too. It's like you wanted to, like the characters are like, can you just slow down, please, right. Matt? You're like killing these people. Yeah. Get- yeah, and that's the funniest part is that my best friend's like, you never need to write a story where a character dies because that's not acceptable. And I'm like, I'll never do it. And then by book four, I'm like, it needs to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta kill these idiots. I'm like, <laughs> it just makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Because so, people so, die. Because yeah. people die in real life. Yeah. And yeah, and I mean, you know, we got to accept that. So it's, yeah. I want it to have more meaning than just it's the end. Um, okay. So, but that's, that's the way the story is built is that it's built on empowered women. Um, I want my daughter to grow up and be like, oh, you know, different stereotype, break the stereotypes. Um, yeah. I wanted men that could be sensitive and strong, but also caring. And then I also wanted, the idea of friendship and love to transcend like and not in the cheesy way like i love you so therefore we'll always win like no no it's, <laughs> it's, it's gonna, gonna be hard it's gonna yeah. be really hard but like it yeah. still can overcome things so that's really cool man I, i'm blown away that this started back in november or october yeah, a lot of people call me crazy <laughs> It's, I mean, it's possible, right? It's, it's something that's possible. It's just, it's, in, it's incredible, is what it is, to have a flow of idea like this lead out from November to now into five books. You've got three already published, right? With, right, with book four soon to be released, correct? Yep. And then book five is in final editing stages. It, it is, and it'll be going for just uh, September time. But the exclusive part that I was telling you um, that I wanted to announce is that I'm actually rewriting book one. You're rewriting book one. So is it is it like to, to make a lot of big changes, or is it to... Not necessarily, just more enhance the descriptions. So um, when okay. I did start out, I wasn't great. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I, words, just words. People that I've been working with, they're like experienced editors of 10 years. They're people that just have read a lot of books. I have friends that work daily in the library. So like I've just been picking their brains and evolving and growing each day. And they're like, are you going to ever do a rewrite? And I'm like, probably not. And then I got to book five and I'm like, wow, my skills have really changed since like the first book. So and even on some of the reviews, I know you're not supposed to read your Amazon reviews, but. On a couple of the reviews, they're like, your ideas are insanity, and we love it, but the descriptions just weren't there. So, book one is good, and I'm So, and that's that's the idea. I'm taking it, and I'm just extending it more. And it's, I don't want to discourage other authors. It's not that I wrote five novels, 
uh, they're actually novellas because they're anywhere from 25 to 30,000 words. So they're not yeah. massive pieces. Um, but altogether, it's about, I think, 135,000 words for all five books currently. So with the rewrite, it'll probably oh, get you frozen up. It'll probably be a bit. There we go. So they're, they're novellas. You said about twenty to 30,000 words apiece. Yeah, so book one is currently 20,000. Uh, book two is 32,000. Book three is 28,000. Book four is 27,000. And then book five right now during edits is about 21,000. So I'll be extending book, book one because of all the description enhancements. And then book five, I'll be putting a lot of work in to grow it a bit bigger. So... So when you wrote these, um, when you got to the end of book one, did you know before you got to the end that it was, you wanted to make a series out of it? Yeah. Yeah. I actually had someone approach me asking why I didn't make it all one book. Um, Cause they're like, why novellas? And I'm like, well, when you look at the covers, you can see I'm taking ideas and just pushing them across all of them. So it's yeah. not... Because I'm doing it in an omnipresent point of view, I can't just say this one cover summarizes everything or that this one idea encompasses it all because it's it's so much bigger than that. Because yeah. it starts on a planet, but it goes to another planet. We do universal travel. You know, there's different party members. Um, I have, jeez. My narrator almost lost her mind because I have 17 side characters. Uh, <laughs> she's like, are, are you doing Game of Thrones here for me? Like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm like, I just, I got to talk about all these people. And they actually enhance the story too. So Yeah. But, yeah, as long as they're, they're in, you know, increasing the value of the story. It's, when you right. say your, narr your narrator almost lost her mind, you mean the narrator who's, you're writing in the, Right? No, I, I have audiobook uh, one and two. Done. Oh, oh, so, very cool. Who's a? Did, is it going to be like uh, available on Audible or? Yep. So book one and two is available on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon on the same page as the books. Um, we're on a pause right now for book three just because she's got a lot going on and I got so many different things happening. But um, yeah. we, I'll, I'll be definitely using her for book three, four, and five. Everyone's loved her. She's got studious uh capabilities when it comes to her narration and the fact that she did different voices for each character just blew me away so that's a, where did you find where'd you find her at just on uh acx right um, craigslist no <laughs> <laughs> i'm <laughs> craigslist. a narrator yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right no i went to i went when i researched uh, audiobooks because um in my mind i wanted to explore every possible platform that there was for the book and yeah according to Amazon's rules, they're like, this is all you can really do as far as this. And I'm like, okay, all right, fine. So I went to Audible and ACX's platform and just put a snippet out there. And the narrator was like, well, my daughter's a dragon expert. And she says, I have to do at least one dragon book. And I'm like, I love your daughter. And her daughter's actually named after one of the characters in Lord of the Rings, Arwen. And I'm like, I'm like, this is perfect. <laughs> yeah, match made in heaven, man. So she's awesome. Um, that's really, yeah, so, I'm, yeah, I'm really interested, interested. I I'm really interested just... about this too. Like, so what happened? What happened in October or before October to have this complete uh, outpouring of creative energy into writing? Because you said you you wrote wrote some before, but you weren't serious about writing, correct? It was just right. like, so what happened? So I've always done poetry. Um, people think I'm crazy because I can do a poem like super fast like i have to write it down i can't do it speaking quickly but writing it down <laughs> i know i'm sorry i'm sorry i can i can try but i'm not great speaking it right away because i have to see the words to be able to rhyme it quickly in my mind but i can pour out poems really fast um okay but, me too so so i love poems. i love poems um yeah but uh i just always explored guitar because i had played that for a long time i love video games I was trying to learn programming and coding, so I was I was focusing more of my efforts in what I thought to be, um, I guess, valued or just able to be used tangibly for work. Um, yeah. 
So those were just things that I was using and learning to kind of develop my own skill sets. Um, but then when I got my current day job, uh, my boss was like, you'll need to enhance your writing skills if you want to get to my position ever. And I'm like, yeah, that's fair. So my I contact my best friend. I'm like, what should I write about? Like, what should I do? And she's like, find something you love. And I'm like, yeah, true. And so I wrote that first paragraph. And um, what I did is I, I took everything that I was doing, all coding, all gaming, all everything, I just stopped it. And the only thing I gave energy to besides writing was you know, taking care of my daughter after work. But yeah. in the first week, I wrote 10,000 words. I was just oh, like, man. I was like, da, 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 da. like, I just like, and every day I was more and more excited. I was like, I'm at this work. I'm, I'm still going. It's still coming. It's still like the idea is just oh. kept flowing through. And at that point, I'm like, I think this is what I'm going to enjoy. <laughs> yeah. And so it just kept growing. So did you t did you walk into your boss's office and say I'm done I uh, I'm, no. a, I'm a famous writer now <laughs> <laughs> yeah right yeah. see you later jerk I'm you should have never good. told me you yeah. should have never told me to start doing something else <laughs> right. no um I'm thankful and appreciative of my boss she um she actually supports me and she thinks I will get to that point one day because she thinks I'm intelligent which you know I whatever I guess <laughs> but um. She These supports people only me. do us, right? Right. I, she supports <laughs> me, but you know, it, it, my day job's still my day job. I still got to do it. So, yeah. <laughs> but um, no, I I was excited, but didn't mean I made some rash decisions. <laughs> That's good. So. Yeah, they always say don't quit your day job, right? Right. But I mean, it, the way you're going about it too is the way that they they're kind of telling everyone nowadays to go about writing. If you're going to do self publishing, is have a have these this series of books and then make sure you're doing a drop every, you know, three months, basically. Right. right. Um, Which for a lot of people can be insane. So, yeah, it can be tough. And I was thinking about like, I'm just going to take three years off from doing everything and just write as many books as possible and then just drop them like every two months. And right. It takes, I mean, it takes time or whatever. It depends on your writing speed because I'm kind of like you where I can pump out some stuff, but a lot of people can't do that. Um, how have you seen the, in terms of get, get publishing it on Amazon the past, since November, how have you seen the uh, feedback you've gotten from the books? Pretty good. Um, the first book was the only one that I got more or less the negative reviews on. Uh, yeah. And there was more people reading it because debut novels. Um, and, you know, whatever, that's on me for not making it the absolute pristine amount, but I was just so excited to push it out there and, like, start the world of it i was just like yeah. this is kind of holding me accountable if i put it out there because yeah. i figured if i didn't publish it and i just left it be even though i could have possibly made it better i don't think i would have gone and grown the same way because i don't no. think i would have felt accountable and yeah like there there's been the challenges and the speed where it really slows down is editing because writing's fast if yeah. you can just get it on paper but editing yeah that takes a bit so well yeah if especially if you have to like rediscover ideas right. i know with with a lot of it, it's like when you talk about putting more detail in it's like all right so i have to expand on this idea how am i going to go about expanding on it right it can be a really tricky thing it can be it definitely can be Especially since you're going back and rewriting book one, like, have you already started that process of rewriting oh, book yeah. one? Yeah, okay. I'm more than a third of the way through now. Um, I have four special people that I'm trusting that can help me with it, so. There's got to be a, because I'm not trying to make you scared. <laughs> Just in my mind, I'm thinking, crap, I better not, like, trying to expand on the ideas while also not trying to write something that I'm then going to have to create something in book two, like, you know, because it's like you have this storyline already already created. You don't right. want to mess Yeah, it. with the rewrite of book one, it's more of just um, description and character development uh, enhancement. The context is all fine. Uh, the ideas, the plot, plot twists, they all work. Um, but the character... The oh, yeah. I love plot twists. I love them. <laughs> Both good yeah. and bad. So That's right. I think both directions. But um, yeah, I, I'm just more doing description enhancement, scenery, senses, trying to 
bring the people in more like the the first time people read book one they're like it's great with the ideas but it just kind of feels the white room syndrome and i'm like okay yeah. so you just don't know where you are or what's happening which i'm like i can fix that yeah so yeah and it's a fine it's a fine balance you learn as you write it's a fine balance between like describing enough so people can create a room in their head where there's but not getting and i talked to another author about this not like getting down to the very nitty gritty detail of like what kind of buttons are on a person's coat. Yeah, right, right, right. Like you don't need to describe everything. It's There's just a little bit too much at some times. Yeah, exactly. Are you yeah. finding it difficult to a process or are you Um, I think in normal writing style that could be hard, but what's really helping me and there might not be a lot of authors that can take this approach is because I'm developing that video game for my books. I'm actually yeah. able to take what I'm putting onto a game and take that imagery and then put it into my mind that I can develop into words. That's awesome. Yeah, I wanted to talk about it. You're, you're, so you're designing a video game for the book series? For all of my books, every book. So is it, what do you mean every, all five of them? Well, yes, but you have other I books? decided that all the books are connected through a universe altogether. So every single book will have a character, have a cameo within another book, which I've already started doing. And anytime anyone reads this book, they will get a specific character that has a storyline in this arc over here. So I'm doing that with the video game too, where they're just all connected. What? <laughs> it's, what? it's insanity. It's insanity. It is insanity. But, so the video game, is it like a, are you doing like a book one video game or is it like a video game that encompasses the entire world and then no. you're just going to allow them to RPG style? Book one to start for video game one and I'm trying to make it as unique and as fun as possible um, for a 2D RPG game uh, so that they're enticed. Top down to style? Like yeah, top down, top down. So That's that cool. way that they're enticed enough to keep going. Because I don't want to charge a lot for the game. Um, since I'm making it all myself, I don't really have like a budget that I need to make back. I'm more of focusing, how can I take someone loving the book and then also loving the game? Like, how, yeah. can, they, how can they help each other? And the ideas in the book into the game, right. where it's not just like a replay of the book. Right, yeah, I'm not going to make it the exact same. Granted, there will be some um, chapter dialogues there from the book, so that sure. way people will be like, oh, spots in the video game so that it has more of its own unique feel, but you know it's still part of that same story. What are you using to create the video game? So, so you're a coder. You uh, do coding in IT? Yep. Um, yeah. The software that I purchased that gave me license to do so is called RPG Maker kind of uh -huh. had a bad reputation a few years ago because it comes with a stock amount of stuff that you can make a game within two days but they're not good games <laughs> yeah. um so i'm taking my time i've like spent a lot of my time balancing my writing to half of the day writing half of the day game designing so i've kind of cut it in half to be able to actually put good time into the design of the video game so yeah, and trying to find that creative energy because I know, I mean, it's it, it gets to a point where, at least for me, let me speak for myself here, to where I get, like, I'm just really exhausted creatively. To right. I feel, I'm almost afraid to put anything else down because I'm going to, it's like forcing forcing something, you know? Right, you don't want to force it, so. How do you and go about managing that? Um, I do the other taboo. I write multiple different stories at once. <laughs> Nice. So as soon as I start <laughs> feeling like I'm burned out on one, I'm like, uh, I'll put this down for a couple of days and then shoot over to this one, which is live right now. Even though I'm editing in book one, I'm also attempting to write a horror fantasy. So, yeah, it's challenging me because I'm trying to learn better suspense and tension. So. Wow. No, yeah, it's. Reaching into other genres where you're uncomfortable, I think, is so important for us, especially in those creative downtimes where we're exhausted. Right. In one creative vein to try and move into another one. That's awesome, man. Are you yeah. gonna try and make that? A, are you gonna try and have that like as a book? This horror oh. fantasy? Are you gonna try and put that out too? Yeah. Yeah. Um. So one that I started back when I was in book three, it was um, 
it's it's got ten thousand words in it, but that one's going to be a standalone, so I've, that's only like one tenth of the way done. It's yeah. um, it's kind of a book play on Zoids, the TV show. Um, okay. So, but I'm taking it in a whole different direction. Like the Zoid guy is the villain, and the overarching part is actually about music, and it's just it's an interesting story. So, Wait, is Zoid is Zoid the thing with the big face? Yeah, do you um you remember Gundam? Gundam Win? Yep, Gundam. Um maybe even like Sailor Moon or yeah. yeah, like just any of those shows where they did like transformations or special armor yeah. or things like yeah. that. So okay. I like taking all that and just merging that into the stories. <laughs> so you're making like robot transformer type uh, horror sci fi? Somewhat, yeah. <laughs> so. Dang, bro, that sounds. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. Like, I it's like those those machines or whatever. Yeah, yeah, That's and true. then um, and then I'm gonna build stories off of every character from my original five books too, because <clears throat> they had so much. It's so much to them that there's just they're not done. They were just done in that series. So, so what's your goal here? Like what? What is your overarching like? Do you have a, a idea of where Caleb Wright wants to be ten years from now from writing all this stuff? One movie. You want to make a movie? One movie. One movie where I get a dragon movie that is not horrid. <laughs> like, yeah. no offense to all the producers out there, but like Game of Thrones is the closest thing that's amazing dragons. Everything else, it's like. Yeah, right. Like Dragon what about Wars train was your dragon. What's that? How to Train Your Dragon. How to Train Your Dragon is awesome, but that's still cartoony. So I want, like, you You're feel the real. realness of it. Yeah. Unless I get an anime. I'd be okay with anime, too. <laughs> yeah, I'm so. trying to think of other dragon movies. I mean... Well, there was Dragon Wars, which was basically super giant snakes. Um, there was Dragon Heart, which was good, but the CGI back then was not up to par. The story right. was great, but just the, not not the um, the graphics. And right. then there's been a bunch of other like like Smog that was great from The Hobbit, um, and yeah. he was a great looking dragon, but like he was an evil dragon. Mine aren't necessarily evil, so it's like I'm trying to take different stereotypes and then take those graphics and just mesh them all together. So I, like I would that. like just one movie, one movie. If I could have that, I'd feel good. <laughs> That's cool, man. It's good to have those. It's good to have those goals to where you, you know what you want, at least something out of it. Because obviously, you love your job, and right, you're going to continue to do that. Yep. Um, even if even if I become the absolute bestseller in writing, I'm still doing my day job. Oh yeah, you yeah. already made. Yeah. It's like winning the lottery, right? Like I'm not leaving work. I'm still. <laughs> I want to contribute to my retirement. <laughs> That's a good point. Very cool. Um, so what kind of, in terms of, uh, I think we've kind of already touched a little bit on your um, inspiration, but like books that you read growing up that inspired you to want to write this stuff. I know Dungeons and Dragons and role-playing games, that kind of thing, but were there certain books that you looked to and like, I want to write that? Uh, Narnia, Percy Jackson, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, definite big ones for me. No. Dude, Rick, Rick Rorodian, I don't know if he gets enough pub, but that guy is an incredible writer for Percy Jackson, The Lightning Thief, mm -hmm. and like all the other. He's written so many freaking books. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is is yours? How who would you compare your style to? Ooh, um, that's a hard one. I think I follow more along the lines. I I probably follow more along the lines of the writer for Percy Jackson, just because I do a lot of Greek mythology. Um, yeah. I, correction, I do Greek mythology blended with my own creation, so I kind of mix them together. Um, but, yeah, that would probably be the closest. Maybe Narnia, is because you're taking real-world things and just transporting it into a different fantasy dimension. So, yeah. a little bit of those two, probably. I would like to be compared to J.K. Rowling, but we'll, we'll wait for that. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, because she created a whole universe right to live in um and w with like rick rewarding the thing i noticed about him that i love the best is that he he 
is able to take a subject that can be difficult to learn or or not difficult to learn, but it's got a lot of subject material, mm -hmm. and uh, he puts a new spin on it, a fun spin, and he also makes it really easy to read. Like, right. if a book is very difficult, if it feels like reading a textbook, then you don't want to, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm not here to read a textbook, I'm here to enjoy some sci-fi right. fantasy. Story. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So you feel like that's kind of where you, where you sit with... It's getting there. Yeah. All right, well, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll read it then. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Maybe I won't wait till the movie comes out. <laughs> well, I'm not Winning. focused too much on promotion right now. I'm focused on writing. Uh, when That's when good. all five books are published and done, yeah, then I'm going to be hard promoting. So, That's, Do you have an idea of what you're going to do in terms of promotion? Mm, I see. So I work off the free 99 budget system so <laughs> um, yeah uh, so i've been growing twitter like a madman um back in december december 12th i only had like 100 followers um and as of today i'm almost at 3,000. so yeah, like and i'm not doing that i follow you you follow me game i follow you you follow me like i'll follow people that follow me now but I don't go actively searching writers to follow because I, so my process is I want to be able to support you. I want to be able to agree with your opinions and I want to be able to know if you have something to say online that I can be like, yeah, let's get behind that. So, yeah. and if I just go following random writers for the sake of numbers, there's going to be people that say things that I'm like, I don't actually agree with that. <laughs> and so <laughs> like, I want to make friends that like there's a community that we can just work together, help each other. So yeah, that's well, it, gets, it gets too congested too. It's like, you're just not, it's just so much stuff flowing in all the time. It's hard to even, oh, yeah. even it's hard to even communicate or, or oh, yeah. make. That's, that's why I love gifts. Cause they're my fastest way of communication. <laughs> Gifts are fantastic, that's for sure. So, yeah. when when uh, do you have an idea when the video game is going to be done? Um, I'm hoping that I can have it tested in the next three weeks, and then as long you're, as so you're really goes, close to having it. You just started oh, yeah. this video game like uh, less than a month ago. Yep, yeah, I've been putting three to four hours into it each night. Um, Who's doing artwork? Are you doing the artwork too? And so um, the nice thing is with this software is that there is a community online that do royalty free um, sprites, tiles, things like that. And then buying the software, it comes with a large pack of stuff that comes with the purchase anyway. So oh, cool. as long as you credit those people that are the artists, yeah. then you can use the resources accordingly, even commercial. So wow, yeah. So I just I just did good research, and I'm like, yeah, I want that. I want that. Credit that person. I want that. Oh, that's great music. Credit that person. So just a lot of, lot of download. Like, the first three days was just downloading the resources to make the game. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, that's incredible, man. You were working at a fevered pace. <laughs> always. Always, always. <laughs> and I, just, I pulled up the website. You, did you just start the web? Did the website just get up? Or? The website's been up since December, but I overhauled it about two weeks ago. Um, I went and made... Uh, at first, I thought I could fit everything into one page and just kind of looked like garbage. Um, so I went ahead and just separated <laughs> out the page. And I was like, yeah, this doesn't look great. So I just no. went ahead and separated all the pages. I made sure there was a book page. There was an About Me page. Um, there's a video game page so that people can see that. And I'll be offering downloads through that page, too, at one point. And then I've been doing um, author interviews on the blog section because I don't really blog myself, but I love to support other authors. So I'm like, yeah. I will gladly interview other people, So, which I'm sure you're in that same boat, you know, supporting others. I hate, and learning I from hate them. other people so much. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they all fail. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, and that's what I think the community is supposed to be about. I think there's enough success and and every to go around. And I, I think that everyone's idea of success is a little bit different enough to where we can all reach what we want and everybody have enough. You know what I mean? I don't think right. there's – like what I want is different from what you want, and I feel like I can lift you up the same way you can lift me up. And if we can – if as a community, that's what a community is. It's like we all right. fill in the gaps where we're weak. So we can be stronger together, and exactly. that's that's my that's favorite what I, saying is better together. 
So. Better together, man. Yeah, it's like uh, that movie um, Planet of the Apes where he's got the bun- bundle of sticks. <laughs> that's what I think of every time. Exactly. It's a bunch of apes, man. Um, that's very cool. So how often do you do the uh, the author interviews? Um, so I only just started that five or six days ago, and I've gotten okay. seven posted so far. So wow. I just put them up as I get them. I don't have a scheduled thing. Um, do you have questions you send out and they just yep. answer them? Yeah. I have a preset amount of 20 questions that I felt were the most impactful questions that I ask all the same. I don't, I don't change up the questions because um, the questions that I've already asked are so versatile that the answers I've gotten have been so radically different from each other. What's your favorite question? Um, ooh. I really love the question, have you ever written anything that made you cry? Because writing is great, and Mm -hmm. anyone can write. But when you write something that makes your own soul weep, then you're hitting another level. Yeah. Like, with my last book in book five, like, when I was writing, I was like, yes, next Mm -hmm. book. Yes, next book. Yes, next book. But then when I got to the fifth book, I was like, oh, my God. This is about to end. Like, And then when I did the ending, I was like, oh, that. That hurt. <laughs> so, like, yeah, it, it it hits you. But that's that's if you love what you're writing. If you're writing for the sake of money or if you're writing for the sake of just doing it, yeah. you're not going to enjoy it. And it probably won't end up at doing that well, to be honest. But um, yeah. you you got to love what you're writing. So. Absolutely, man. Yeah, when, when you uh, – and I wrote something that made me cry in my last book – and it was like I was sitting there writing it, and I had music going when I wrote. Yep, and, yep, 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 yep. And it was like somehow the music knew that I was about to write this scene. Right. And it, like the song changed. <laughs> and like it got dark outside. Right, right. <laughs> it's time. Go. And I'm just like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> right, right. But it's so powerful, man, because that's what we do as writers. We want to convey emotion to the readers that when they read it, they're like, ugh, right. I'm there. Like, we want to care about these characters so much because they're like children to us very in a much. way. Yep, very much so. So, yeah. Very, I, very impressed with you, young man. <laughs> <laughs> you're like You're like a rocket ship. You're really just... Uh, yeah. Are people concerned? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, yeah. I get that too. Yeah, my wife every night she's like, So like after book five are you done? I'm like, Oh hell no. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I it's, got so much to write about. So Do you when you when you do take time to like breathe and look back at what you've done, are you amazed by it? Are you amazed by it? It blew my mind that I did hundred and thirty thousand words in four months. Yeah. Um, that that made me floored because uh, you know I knew how much I was writing in each book, but then like when I finally finished and I put the post up on Twitter that I had finished, I went and counted my words up, and I'm like, "Damn, that's a lot." <laughs> yeah. right. And I'm like, "That's that's like one Harry Potter book right there that I just <laughs> did in four months." And I'm like, "Well, like the last last three Harry Potter books, yeah, <laughs> because they're like close yeah. to." It pages they're long so but yeah um yeah and i want to keep going like my one friend she inspires me so much she she's actually crazier than i am and in a good way um she doesn't get as much sleep as i do which i only get about five to six hours as it is and she has written i think in two years maybe one or two years 2.5 million words and i'm like Mother of God. <laughs> That's like, insane. I'm like, I want to get to that point. <laughs> so, yeah, was this like over 100,000 plus words, a, uh, 100,000 words a, a month? Basically, yeah. Yeah. Jeez, so, man. That's like four to 5,000 a day. <laughs> what do you, do you use? Um, I, I know I've had some success with like using a timer, mm-hmm. and, like timing, like doing word sprints. Uh, I've got some other people who do word sprints. Do you, do you do that or you just have like, I'm writing from this time to this time and go for it? 
Um, I've done some sprints, but normally my schedule is um, my daughter will usually go to bed about eight thirty, nine o'clock, and then from that exact point until about the last thirty minutes before nighttime, when my wife and I hang out, like we'll play face ten or something or play a card game. Um, between those hours right there, I'm just I'm game time at that point. So, yeah. um, like the ideas are always sitting there, just ready. And then as soon as I hit, whether it be my phone for Google Docs or the computer for Microsoft Word or anything like that, I'm just go. So I'm so much lazier than you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not What's laziness. That? No, it's not lazy. I just like going to sleep at like nine thirty. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I I'm I'm ex military, so um, like anything over six hours just feels like procrastination to me. <laughs> Well, I mean, if you think about it, if if you were to live to be a hundred years old and you sleep eight to ten hours a day, it's like you only you only live like really fifty years. So exactly, might as well get the heck up and get to work on something, right? Exactly, I'll sleep one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for a while. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. No, I mean, that's the thing. I just I get up and go, and I keep it going. So, all right. So um, this will be the last question here. So what? do you want to leave the writing community with um, from this interview? What's your, what do you, what do you want them to know about Caleb Bright? Well, know that anything I write, um, it will be challenging stereotypes. Um, I want everyone to be heard. I want all, all genders, all races, all everybody to be understood and to know that your voice matters. Um, you know, no one knew me. A few months ago, now at least 3,000 people know me. Um, and it's just growing and growing. And I don't plan on stopping. And um, basically, the more the more effort you give to it, the more will come out of it. But you need yeah. to be willing to grow. Because one thing I was talking about with my editor today is that you can just write one genre. You can just write one point of view always and just be comfortable with that. And that's great. But if that's what you want, fine. That's that's fine as well. But if you want to grow, you have to look at how to challenge yourself and how to push beyond and be able to accept the uncomfortability of it and know that it will probably be bad the first time. The horror stuff that I'm writing right now, I've already rewritten the first paragraph five times. Um, <laughs> it started out with, yeah, that was all right. And then it was, oh, that was really sad. And then... It's a little bit more tense, and now it's getting more and more and yeah. more. And so, so it will evolve, but you you can't beat yourself up on like what it takes to make it happen. The, the first thing, and a lot of people said this, but I mean this as well, just write the story. The yeah. editing, there's thousands of people out there that are willing to either help for free, help for small cost or help for a decent cost because they want stories edited and they want to make sure that they shine and are polished. So don't worry so much about the editing. Worry about doing the idea and then having other people help you make that idea shine. So that's my biggest thing is that you just, you got to write. You got you to gotta write. Just do it, baby. Yeah. So. Awesome, man. Well, Caleb Wright, thank you so much for coming on the Uniweb interview show. Thank you for having me. Truly a pleasure to talk to you, man. Um, we'll make sure to stay up, and all of your information will be located in the description below the video, your website, and um, all the books and links to, to buy them and everything like that, okay? Sweet. All right, man. Thank you. Thanks right. again. We'll talk to you later. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you would, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification for the bell. You know what? We love you. Love you. Love you. You know what?